So um, I will talk about the role of financial intermediaries in digital asset infrastructures. My name is Matthias Hutschurz. I'm principal at Define and heading the blockchain and digital asset practice there. Quickly about Define. Define is a consultancy with over 1,000 employees. Um, what makes us pretty special is uh, that we're um, 90 percent physicists, mathematicians, and computer scientists. And with this background, we are very hands-on bridging the gap between a typical business analyst and programmer role and uh, helping our clients to build turnkey um, solutions for their problems. And that's also how we work in our dedicated blockchain practice, helping our clients to design, build and ship blockchain-based solutions. We have organized our offering in three pillars. Uh, the first pillar is around platform solutions, building potentially disruptive new platform business models based on DLT. So for example, we have helped one large banking client to build a debt capital markets platform based on DLT. In the second pillar, we're supporting our clients uh, to build up new market infrastructures for digital assets. So for example, we have supported several clients in building um, custody solutions for digital assets. And finally, in the third pillar, we are supporting our clients in the tokenization and STOs. We have uh, built our own technical solution for that and currently supporting a client to tokenize real estate. Now let's get to the topic um, of my talk. And um, there are three key challenges our clients face um, when considering to move into digital assets. And these uh, challenges uh, correspond to three key questions. The first one is, what is my role and strategy in the ecosystem? What kind of use cases do I want to implement? The second is, what's the right organizational setup for that? And the third question is, what's the best approach for implementation? Let's start with the first question. There are many opportunities how regulated institutions can um, create new services, be it an exchange, be it a bank or an asset manager. And we have organized these opportunities on three different layers. The first layer is the service layer. And you could ask, what kind of role do I want to play here? I won't go through all the examples, just give one example. You could think about building a primary markets platform, for example. On the second layer, the access layer, um, you will see a lot of trusted third parties that are highly regulated. And for example, you would be offering, you could offer custody for digital assets on this layer. Further, on the asset layer, you might think about bringing cash on the blockchain, tokenize a fund, or even create crypto funds. And finally, on the settlement layer, you could ask yourself whether you want to be part of the settlement infra infrastructure and maintain such a settlement infrastructure together with other players. Now, if you combine that with um, the different client groups you have from retail to institutional clients and the different channels, channels, how you reach your clients, it becomes pretty messy, let's say, and complex. So we looked into the market and identified four high level approaches to digital assets currently in the market. And we clustered them along two dimensions. The first dimension was whether um, the players offer just a single use case or several use cases. And the second dimension is around whether they rather follow a SaaS or partnering approach or more an on-prem bespoke solution approach. Um, on the bottom left, you, you find um, niche players, um, for example, small specialized banks that um, focus also in the traditional world on, on a single use case and now want to move this use case into the digital asset world. On um, um, the next uh, quadrant, you have the generalists. They, they implement multiple use cases because um, their clients are used to have a broader um, 
a, a, a broader um, list of services. And so um, you could picture here a small private bank that's, that wants to offer um, a holistic um, digital asset offering, however, doesn't want or doesn't have the capabilities to um, build bespoke solutions for every part. Then on, on the um, upper left, you have the specialists that really focus on a single use case and develop highly specialized solutions. You could think about, um, for example, a fintech startup here that's uh, building a crypto uh, custody solution. And finally, on the upper right side, you find the strategic movers that really have a comprehensive digital asset strategy and um, a lot um, of the of the use cases are um, on-prem and bespoke implementations. Uh, you could picture, for example, large banks or exchanges in this quadrant. Now, if you found your, let's say, if you have an idea where you might um, locate your and your company in this uh, matrix, you um, need to ask further uh, which use cases to implement. And maybe one addition to this here is that obviously this isn't a static picture and we are seeing also players moving from, from a niche player to a generalist um, and also specialists implementing more use cases or even generalists maybe for reasons of um, time to market first start um, in the bottom and then move up. Now let's look at if you have found your place in this matrix, let's look at what specific use cases you should implement or better, which questions you should ask um, to decide on, on the right use cases. And the first point I want to make here is that the traditional roads um, in the digital asset industry really are reshuffled. So you think you should think beyond your current role. And one good example for this is Fidelity. And they are offering um, a custody solution for institutional clients and clearly moving beyond the traditional role of an asset manager. So what is the, the right question to ask with regards to the use cases? And it's not what are my core strengths? We have seen in the past um, that this might be a big mistake. A much better question is what will create value for my clients currently and in the future in this ecosystem. And we are still in a pretty immature stage of the industry where the competition currently is not about price, but about the best product that I can offer to my clients. This is because of um, retail and institutional client needs are not um, fully met yet. Um, and for example, in terms of usability, in terms of trust, in terms of scalability and regulation. So you should ask yourself at which point in the ecosystem is value created for my clients and where do I need to build up knowledge to be able to offer a great product? And usually in this kind of situation, the most integrated players that control all components of an infrastructure have a competitive advantage because with more control um, comes the possibility also to build a better product. And for this, clients will also be willing to pay a premium price. Finally, let me make the case for custody. Custody is an enabler for, for upstream services. It's at the basis of the digital asset infrastructure and enables you to transact to initiate transactions, to control smart contracts, to connect to DeFi protocols. So this is really an enabler for functionalities and for product um, in several services. So it's, it's a good starting point for many players, at least for those that have a more comprehensive digital asset strategy. And, um, and quickly give um, a rough idea what, what happens next. So after you have decided on certain use cases, you will define your journey through um, through this um, digital asset ecosystem. You might want to start with a cold so storage solution and, and combined inroad to digital assets for your clients, maybe targeting high net worth individuals or family offices. 
then you move up and extend your solution towards um, other client groups, for example, crypto funds or exchanges by adding new functionalities, for example, like a traditional asset servicing or prime broker solutions. And finally, um, um, afterwards or even in parallel, you can think about further services I mentioned earlier um, to address further client needs in, in different segments, for example, in retail segment. Now, if you have um, decided um, for um, a specific offering, you need to ev evaluate the best approach for implementation. So that's the second question I want to address here. What's the best approach? And for each of the use cases, you can either think about partnering, buying, or building a uh, solution. And, and you can then, um, then evaluate the scenarios for each use case. And there's a little bias towards a more integrated approach here, as I said, because um, the competition is about a good product here. And then, for example, you can have certain evaluation criteria, criteria like cost, time to market, or strategic fit, and then finally decide based on a scoring on, on the best approach. And now let's look at the, um, the organizational setup that, that is needed um, for, um, for these new businesses. And as was said earlier, the time for experimentation is over. And the question, question is, how do we create successful digital asset businesses? And, um, and the first option is to uh, um, locate uh, this business um, in the existing business lines. This works well for additions to existing business models, um, for example, um, when you might offer cryptocurrencies to consumers via existing channels. However, this poses, this approach poses challenges if the model becomes more uh, disruptive and the fight for resources starts, especially the budget. And then you compete, a small, um, new business competes with a large profitable business. You might have problems with agility. And maybe most importantly, you might have issues with management attention and incentivization um, because the managers will need to manage two, two businesses. And even if you get the incentivations towards the new business, the question really is if you want that and want to shift away the attention of the managers to away from their profitable existing business. So there is... The second option to create a new business line for these offerings, um, let's say this is the um, head of digital assets approach, and this works well for offerings with competitive business models, like, for example, offering a standalone custody solution along the classical custody business. And at least with that approach, you have dedicated managers growing and building the new products, and you don't have the problem of management attention Still, you have the problems to fight for the resources and the problems with agility. So this brings me to the third option to found a new company. And this might be the best solution for disruptive, completely new business models. For example, not novel platform businesses that in principle also compete with the existing business. And um, the challenge that is left in this option is that um, if you have several initiatives that you need to align them you need alignment between the initiatives because they start to have their own will and need to be coordinated. Now, let's get to the third question and what's the best approach to get started, how to implement it. And there are three archetypical um, approaches here, the waterfall approach, the sandbox approach, and the agile approach, um, all of which um, in practice are um, mixed and um, can be also combined for your situation. The waterfall approach has not a very good reputation, however, it might be necessary or might be needed in certain situations. So it works like this, that you perform a thorough analysis, you calculate a business case, you get approval from the board, and then implement the defined scope. Obviously, you have 
issues with time to market and flexibility to, rec to changing requirements. Um, but it might be necessary to get the budget approved or get stakeholders aligned uh, behind a common vision. In the sandbox approach, you start with, for example, a design sprint and innovation lab. You build POCs and do experiments maybe with startups. And on the way, you educate the stakeholders, um, you raise the awareness, and ideally, you get the buy-in. The key challenge here is that the projects may never leave the POC stage and lack senior management support. In the agile approach, um, which is the more startup-like approach, it could be summarized like think big and start small. You combine small concepts with practical implementation and with a clear intent to bring the first solution to market as soon as possible. And the mark budget is then given according to milestones and not according to um, a five-year business plan. However, the challenge with this approach is to get the buy-in, the budget from stakeholders to follow this more startup-like approach. So in practice, these um, these um, approaches are combined. And if you're interested how what works, um, what might work for your company, please do not hesitate to contact us. And I want to quickly summarize um, the key questions you need to consider. The first one is, how do we want to create value for our clients and, and then build up the right capabilities rather than asking what are my core competences. The second question is what's the most suitable organizational setup for my business model and for my use case. So this will be dependent on the business model and how it fits into your organization. And finally, what is the right implementation approach for my situation? So, if you're interested to discuss this more, please do not hesitate to contact me. Here are my contact details and thank you.